Hey everyone, Doubly here, and welcome to the end of 2023. Um, I thought it'd be kind of like a fun little exercise to go through the games that I've played on the channel and kind of like make a list of what I thought were, or, or rank them rather. Um, and it just so happens that with the rule that I've set for myself in this list that we have 10 games um, to go through. Uh, I was actually looking through the playlists that I have and it just so happens we have 13 playlists. So I played through 13 games on the channel over the course of 2023. Um, on week two, I don't think I finished on the channel by the time this goes up, but just, you know, spoiler alert, I have played through all of it. Um, I've pre I've made some recordings ahead of time because it is the holidays. So <laughs> just thought I would spend some time getting that out of the way so that I could, you know, hang out with friends and family. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about on week two when we get there, but that's why it's on the list. And, um, yeah, so 13 games on the channel down to 10 because the rule I only have one rule for this list really and it's uh, I'm not going to put games that I've played before that I've played on the channel so this would get mean um, Devil May Cry 5 it won't be on the list um, what else was it Hades won't be on the list and um kind of as an extension of the rule uh remakes that i've played on the channel uh won't be on the list unless i feel like they've ex changed the experience enough um and that is why we have resident evil 4 here uh crisis core remake i think didn't do enough to change itself from the previous version of it uh I was hoping there might be like some kind of interesting story beats in it that was that would be included in Crisis Core Reunion, um, because of how Final Fantasy Remake and Rebirth is being handled. But unfortunately, there wasn't anything like that, so Crisis Core Reunion isn't going to be on this list. Um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't check it out if you haven't played Crisis Core before. Um, definitely, if you like, you know, Final Fantasy, if you like Seven, um, and you like those characters, and you just got into Seven because of the remakes, then definitely check out Crisis Core Reunion. It's it's going to be a blast, and it's super fun. Um, and also, you'll probably want to for Rebirth anyway. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's get started with this, shall we? Um, let's just go down the list here. Uh, Alan Wake 2, number two, definitely going to put it in the second spot here. Um, I think Alan Wake 2 is really impressive in terms of what it's trying to do as a, as a video game, as a, as a, as a medium of art. <laughs> one might say, because it's basically a, a multimedia project almost. Um, you've got a, a manuscript, a story to read through. You have the live action segments. You have a short film in there. You have an album, basically. Um, like the only thing that you it would would make it more impressive as a multimedia project is if there was like animation in it <laughs> um and you know a bunch of other like various pieces of art that you isn't in alan wake 2 but what it already has is absolutely amazing um the breadth of kind of genres and mediums of art that it has is it it's it's kind of staggering um but yeah sam lake and the team at remedy did an amazing job with this 
this title. Um, the the story itself it's super fun to go through and see how it unfolds and trying to figure out where it's going and where it's headed. Um, all of that was super fun. Um, Saga I think was a great great uh, protagonist and I mean Alan as well. Um, and yeah, I think the, the story and the setup and the way it works all really flow into each other really well. Um, the combat and the gameplay, I mean, it's a third person shooter, so, um, and it's like a survival horror kind of third person shooter, so. Uh, you know, there's not much to expect from that, but it's really well done um, and it feels really good to play. So there is that. Um, but yeah, apart from that, like, I just think Alan Wake 2 as an overall package, as an experience is absolutely stellar. Oh, excuse me, I had to get a sip of water there. Um, and I just, there is one funny thing that I would like to say about Alan Wake 2. After I finished, uh, after I played through it, uh, you know, I, this, I usually, you know, see what the general reception is after I'm done with the game. And I saw a couple of posts from people saying that they didn't like the way it ended. And they thought that it didn't bring them the closure that they wanted from Alan Wake 1. And all I have to say is, man, welcome to the club. Welcome to the Kingdom Hearts club because of KH3 and the way that happened. But I think Alan Wake 2 does a better job. Um, I think the way it reveals the story plot, like the elements and the plot beats is better. The way it ends, I think... Is pretty satisfying for me. Um, and it ties everything from the start of the game very well together. So, yeah, Alan Wake 2 definitely deserves second spot. Um, there is a sequence in it, the last chapter where we play a saga that really, really, really got to me. Um, and I think it's a very, very beautiful sequence. Um, at the end there. So yeah, on the way to second place for sure. Uh, we have control next. Um, control I'm thinking four or five. I can't decide which <laughs> let's, let's give it four. And then if we feel different, we can change it around later. That's totally fine. But control, man, why did I only play two hours of it? That's weird. <laughs> um, maybe, you know, life might have just gotten in the way, as life tends to do. But yeah, I only played two hours of it before. And uh, I don't know why, because it's an absolutely fun, great experience. Um, it was super fun just learning about the objects of power, altered items, all the paranatural events that occurred, you know, the altered world events, um, learning more about the Federal Bureau of Control and all of its personnel and staff. Those were really fun to read through. Um, and like just the atmosphere of control, the art direction of control. Um, I loved all of it. So... Yeah, I don't know why I just didn't, you know, play after those two hours. What was I thinking back then? I don't know. Past me was silly. Current me is still silly, but you know. Um, what else can we say about Control? The gameplay actually is a lot more fun than I expected. Um, very different type of third-person shooter than Alan Wake 2 is, for sure. Um, especially with all the powers you can get in Control. 
uh, they're all super, super cool and fun to, you know, use in combat when you remember that they exist. <laughs> uh, got a lot of mileage out of my shield dash ability at the end there. But um, yeah, I think, you know, the only things I would dock against control really is the, uh, the mod system, the weapon mod and personal mod system being random was kind of a pain. and especially having to like uh convert them into resources um like the lower tiered ones all the time that was that was a chore and a half <laughs> oh excuse me um and like the story was a bit bare bones but I think it did what it needed to do, which was like serve the characters and the the world around it. So yeah, Control, definitely a super fun experience, super interesting to go through. Um, next we have Final Fantasy 16, which we are going to place here, number three. <clears throat> Did not expect it to be number three. I thought it was going to be second place on the list, but Alan Wake 2 is such a such an amazing experience that um, kind of bumped 16 down. But that doesn't mean I don't think 16 isn't as good a game as I thought it was when I finished it. Um, I think... It's really, it really is what, uh, you know, the Final Fantasy series kind of needed in terms of direction. Like, I think after 10, maybe, maybe Final Fantasy 12, the series in terms of single player experiences, it was kind of losing its way, kind of losing its focus. Um, I think it was trying to be too much, trying to be more than it was and trying to add in, you know, more and more things that maybe didn't need to be there. Um, especially 15 from what I could tell about its development, there was just so much bloat that didn't need to happen. So yeah, 16, um, I think was really good. Very, it's a very pared down, you know, kind of experience as opposed to the vast open world of 15 and, um, the confusing sort of mess that 13 and its sequels are, um, <laughs> So yeah, 16, uh, I really loved Clive and Joshua and Jill and Sid. Um, I think the character writing was really stellar in this. Um, and I think the themes of 16 were really well done, like <clears throat> breaking free, just finding your own like freedom in the story or the world um and like the relationship between uh the bears and the nobles or the rest of the population um being kind of sort of tied with the struggle clive and the icons are going through with ultima um that relationship was really really uh or that thematic through line i thought was really well done um, and I think the gameplay, the combat was super fun. Being able to switch through your icons and your different abilities and having like your own personalized setup was really, really, really fun. Um, kind of came down to like ultimate ability spamming at the end there, but you know, it was still a, a really, really fun experience for me. So, um, yeah, uh, I guess like 
the only things I would dock for 16 is I kind of wish they gave Jill more to do in the story itself. Um, and the magic system is kind of just there. There's no like elemental weaknesses or strength or resistances or, you know, the, the, the magic is kind of just feels like a gun almost like the spells feel like a gun. <laughs> it's just there to, you know, keep your combo up. Um, and yeah, I think those are the only two things I would really have to say didn't really, um, elevate 16 for me, I guess like the story too, in a, a little bit in a way, because I felt like the story, I think I said this in one of the parts of my playthrough, um, Final Fantasy 16 story it almost feels like Tactics Light, and I really just wanted to play Tactics <laughs> at the end of playing 16. So here's hoping that the Tactics remake comes out soon because I, I really enjoy Tactics. So, um, yeah, that's Final Fantasy 16, number three. Um, up next is Baldur's Gate, and not a surprise to anybody, probably, uh, but definitely best game of 2023 that I've played. Um, I don't think it's hard to argue that BG3 isn't one of the best games to have come out in a really long time. Um, it's just so big. There's so many things you can do, so many different variations of things that you can do, uh, just in terms of like dialogue options. But even outside of like the story stuff, um, there are so many classes and combinations that you can make with your party and party composition and um, builds within those classes are like there are tons of different things that you can do um and even like combat encounters there are so many different ways you can go about these combat encounters um and like going through one area of Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be so different for everybody um you might see things that you're like other people haven't ex encountered or experienced. Um, like if you're playing through like individually with your friends, you all might have different stories about what you did in like, let's say the Underdark or how you handled the, the Grove or, you know, how you handled the, the Thorm family in Act 2. Um, so yeah. There's just so much variety going on in Baldur's Gate 3 that it's just an amazing, amazing video game. And like on top of that, like the story, I think is really, it's a really good story, uh, especially if you play as the Dark Urge. There's just so many things that tie into that, that character background. Um, and like, the side stories for your character for the the party members um all super fantastic uh the party members themselves are uh they're all stellar you know um i have some favorites i have some that are not quite as much of a favorite <laughs> but that doesn't mean that they're bad or that some are better than the others i think they're all really written very well um, and the kind of character growth that they growth go through are all really, really amazing. Um, so, yeah. Um, I haven't felt like this about a game since Dragon Age Origins, really. 
And I think I mentioned that at the start of the playthrough is that I was looking for something to give me the same feeling that I did or that I got when I first played through Dragon Age Origins and BG3 does that and so much more. So that is why it's at the top of the list. Um, what do we have next? Fire Emblem Engage. Okay. <laughs> well, this one is going to go... Here? That, that seems about right. Fire Emblem Engage. Man, what can we say about Fire Emblem Engage? Um, the gameplay is actually really good in terms of like a tactics RPG, I think. Uh, or even compared to like the previous Fire Emblems. Um, I think the engage mechanic is super fun and the kind of variety you get with it is, it's pretty cool. Um, and I think a lot of the, the maps in engage are pretty interesting as well. Um, they're not just the same or they're not just like boxes are squares that they kind of were in three houses. Um, I think engage has a lot more side objectives for you to do or like, um, interactions on the map that you can do. So yeah, I think in terms of gameplay, Engage compared to other Fire Emblem titles or previous Fire Emblem titles, at least it really put itself up there. Um, but it's almost kind of like a fate situation where the story isn't like the most amazing thing in the world, and the characters and the character writing isn't like the greatest. <laughs> um, but the gameplay itself is super fun and a blast to go through so yeah um i think that's about everything i have to say about fire emblem engage and why it is place where it is um let us move on to hi-fi rush this thing is gonna be here um I think control and high. I think control and Hi-Fi Rush are pretty much interchangeable in their spots. Hi-Fi Rush came out of nowhere, um, and was an amazing, amazing rhythm action game. Uh, something I never thought I would play or see, but they managed to pull it off. Um, making it so that you time your combos to the beat and making it so that pretty much everything lines up and matches up with the background and the music um, was absolutely amazing. Like the art direction and the sound direction in Hi-Fi Rush is incredible. Um, uh, in terms of... so. Fire Emblem Engage's story is a bit of a Saturday morning cartoon, and so is Hi-Fi Rush, but I think Hi-Fi Rush really leaned into that and made everyone super cartoony, um, and it fits with the art style as well, so <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed the kind of over-exaggeratedness of Hi-Fi Rush, um, because it kind of it fit the kind of game that and the kind of uh, atmosphere that they were going for with the game itself. So, um, yeah, High Fire Rush, super fun game, super fun concept, um, super fun like action rhythm art game that I just had a lot of blast going through. Um, yeah. 
So what we have next here is Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Hmm. Where do we put this? Ooh, that's a tough one. I think we can go between this like that. I would put Spider-Man 2 over Engage. Yeah. Um, man, seeing Spider-Man 2 this low, seeing it at number 8 is kind of crazy. <laughs> um, well, let me get a sip of water. But yeah, I I think maybe I had a bit too much of an expectation going into Spider-Man 2 because I really enjoyed the first game. Um, the first game had really high highs in its story and the emotional climax of Spider-Man 2 just it like it really vexed me um and I was hoping or not of Spider-Man 2 of the of the first Spider-Man game it it really wrecked me and those are some pretty big shoes to fill um and I was hoping Spider-Man 2 could you know reach those same heights but I don't think it ever did um, I felt like maybe they were trying to put too many things on one plate and it felt really short compared to the first Spider-Man game. I'm not sure if that's because we have Pete and Miles and we were going through both of their stories at the same time, or if it just was uh, a shorter game, especially like that last act after we took care of Craven. Um like the symbiote part of the whole thing. It felt super rushed for me. Um and if, you know we were kind of I, I honestly felt like we were kind of zooming through the the end of the game. Um I don't think there was enough time for like the situation to settle itself and make you really kind of go through the whole arc. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That's just how I felt about Spider-Man 2. Um, obviously the combat has been more refined and the new powers are actually really, really fun to, to use and feel really good. But, um, yeah, I, and it sucks that I, I feel so disappointed by this game. Um, it just it just wasn't for me, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, that's Spider Man Two. Let us head on to the next one, Jedi Survivor. We're gonna put that at number ten. <laughs> I don't think that's too much of a surprise really um i feel like jedi survivor 2 or jedi survivor was maybe respawn going we can do fallen order but bigger and i don't know that i agree with that direction <laughs> um But like the character relationships and the writing there were all really good. I think Respawn does a really good job of that. Um, like making you care about the characters and how and their fret and um, you know, the relationships that are building between them. So Yeah, I don't know. Like I don't know what happened with Jedi Survivor. Um, <laughs> kind of wish they, instead of making like these huge open world segments, they kind of like narrowed it down a little 
and polished the game so that you know I didn't get eye strain at the end of every play session. <laughs> um, but apart from that, like I think playing around with the new lightsaber stances was really fun, and traversing the world, uh, you know, just looking for new vistas. I personally enjoyed that, but I don't know if that really added to the experience. <laughs> um, and kind of finding out more about the characters and what they're going through um, was really what kept me going. And that last betrayal at the end there really, really struck. Uh, it really hit. Um, and it was totally understandable from the perspective of the person who did betray the crew. So um, I think it managed to land all the story beats that I wanted to, um, just plagued by technical issues that I think could have been avoided. Um, but yeah, Jedi Survivor down there at 10. Um, next up we have Resident Evil 4 Remake. I think that's a good spot for it to hang out at. And I guess that means we're going to put Lies of P at 6. Let's talk about RE4 Remake. So RE4 Remake is on this list, uh, like I said at the start, because I think it does provide us with a very, like, enough of a different experience from the original RE4 that it could almost be considered, like, a new game. Um, you've got some levels that have been remixed, some levels that have been removed, some new levels, um, and you have a parry with a knife now, <laughs> which is really cool. Um, and some of the, the way the story happens is also a bit different. And so, yeah, I think RA4 does definitely deserve to be kind of thought of as a, a new game, a bit of a new experience. Um, and you know, it was, it was just as much fun, uh, playing through RE4 Remake as it was all those years ago when I first played RE4. Um, and just an overall solid, solid survival, survival horror game, maybe action survival horror game. I don't know. Um, Alan Wake 2 almost feels more survival horror than RE4 does, and like a lot of Alan Wake 2's inspiration in terms of like moment to moment gameplay, um, really feels like it took a lot from the Resident Evil 2 remake, actually. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, RE4, I think I enjoyed uh, all the updates to the systems that it brought. Um, I really liked the new characterizations of the, you know, the characters in there, like Luis. I think I I liked the bit of change that they brought to him. Uh, same with Ashley and uh, everyone else. So. Yeah, I think seventh spot might be a bit low, but I think it fits there for sure. I think um, the this is like pretty much interchangeable over here for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, that is RE4 Remake. And Lies of P. Man, Lies of P, what a game. Was not expecting to play through a Souls like that had this much, you know, polish, this much quality to it. Um I 
haven't played through a ton of souls like games but i've seen some footage like some videos on youtube of people playing through various uh games that have attempted the souls like formula and none of them grabbed me which i mean i guess says a lot about lies of p itself um not to say that i have exquisite tastes or anything but <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't think any other souls like comes close in terms of like attempting to be a souls like that isn't made by from software. Um, the combat feels great. The weapons all feel great. Uh, the weapon customization mechanic is super cool. And Like the atmosphere of Lies of P, the the fact that it's a twist on the Pinocchio story, I thought was really fun, and they had a lot of fun with it. Um, and yeah, like, much more is there to say about Lies of P other than it's a fantastic Souls like with great weapons, great combat, um, and actually kind of a fun story to follow so yep that is my list I, my ranking of the games that i've played through in 2023 uh if i included dmc5 hades and crisis core reunion um hades would probably be number three or number two it would be here somewhere. Devil May Cry 5 would probably be here somewhere. And Crest Core Reunion might be like here somewhere. Which kind of, that's a nice spread actually. Hades, DMC5, Crest Core Reunion. <laughs> um, but this is just what I thought about the games that I've played in 2023. Um, Feel free to agree or disagree with the rankings that I've got on here. Um, I'd actually like to know what you guys think of all of the games on the list, uh, how you would rank them, or just what your top, you know, top games of 2023 were. Um, but yeah, that'd be it for me. I uh, hope your 2023 was amazing and uh look forward to seeing you all in the next year bye